started a series called Give It Up. Last week, we started a series called Give It Up. And the whole aspect that we're talking about is how we need to give up honor to people. Right? We, need, we need to give up respect to people. It's something that a lot of us, we hold to real tight. Right. Like we, we talked about the old saying, uh, in order to get respect, you got to give respect. But we talked about how in God's word, that's not the case. I give honor. I give respect to you because I respect God. And because I do that with him, it naturally flows out of me to everybody else. You know, it, it's almost like there's no such thing as being a, a Christian only on Sundays. I'm either a Christian or I'm not. There's no such thing as being an athlete. Uh, I, I can't tell y'all that I played in the NFL just because I bought a replica jersey. So I need to make sure that when I'm telling people that I'm a Christian or when I tell myself that I'm a Christ follower, I'm not being a replica Christ follower, acting like I'm doing something, but really having nothing to show for all that I'm doing. Like we, we need to make sure that we are acting out this thing of Christianity and honor is one of those ways that we do that. So last week we talked about how we need to make sure that we are honoring God, right? And when we talked about how can we honor, we honor by what we think, by what we say and by what we do. Right. That, that, that is how we show honor. I honor others because I first honor God. And tonight I want to talk to you about something. If I'm going to be honest, I, I've had a hard time with myself and my own personal life. And I'll kind of open up about it here in a second. We're going to be talking about how not only do we need to honor God, there, there's a, a few people in our life that we need to make sure we're honoring. Right. God is number one. And when, when I honor him, it makes it easier to honor everybody else. The second one would be our parental units. Our pro- <laughs> yeah, I heard someone, someone say, oh. <laughs> our, our, our parental unit. Now, this is the thing. When I say parents, I'm not talking about mom and dad. I mean, mom and dad are included in that. But that's whoever's raising you. For, for me, my grandmother was an intricate part. Like, that, that was my lady. My grandma was my lady. So she, she would be included in this. Whoever helps raise you to be the man or the woman that you were growing up to be, that's who I'm talking about. The Bible says that we need to make sure that we are honoring those people who are raising us. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, it says, Honor your father and mother that your days may be long long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So if you honor your mother and your father, if you honor them, then your days will be long in the land that God is giving you, not in the land that you create for yourself. Basically what this is saying is if you honor your mother and father, God will give you heaven on earth. You won't have to wait to die in order to receive and experience all that God has for you. He's saying you can get it right now, right here while you're taking those tests at Darren Finals Week. You could still have a little bit of heaven on earth. Still might have to take them tests, but you could have some heaven on earth if we're making sure that we're getting this honor thing down right. We have to make sure we're doing that. Paul, the Apostle Paul, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. This cat said in Ephesians 6, he's like, yo, this principle right here, honor your father and mother so that your days may be long, is the only commandment with a, uh, with a promise attached to it. If you honor your mother and your father, then your days will be long. If that's the only one that has that promise, that kind of makes it a big deal, right? You're like, like if, if, if I was to tell you, hey, there's one way and one way only, fellas, to make sure that you never get rejected when you ask a girl out on a date. I promise you, you're going to do that one thing every single time. You're going to make sure you always have a date. Right? We, 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 we like these one keys. Like, how, how many of you have ever looked up um, the easiest way to uh, do, cite your sources on a paper? No, y'all, y'all don't write papers? Dang, my school, we wrote papers like crazy. I just got done writing a 14-page paper, had to turn it in on Tuesday. I'm so glad that's done. Man, we, 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 we've looked for different keys. I remember whenever um, I, I, I tried to play video games. Like, I'm not good, but I tried. I'm great at talking trash. I'm great at getting in your head. I show up my own controller asking like I got something. I got that thing on eBay for $2. Like, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to this. But I remember, how, like, YouTubing at one point, like, All right, how can I make sure that I win this game or do these different things? We love to get these one-hit tricks. And the one-hit trick for us in life is making sure that we're honoring the people that are around us, right? We said honor God first, but then honoring our parents next. And so I just want to talk tonight on how can we honor our parents? Or how can we gain more respect for our parents? 
if we remember back to the definition that we gave last week, and to honor someone is to hold them out as valuable, right? So, so I value what you're saying. I value your input. I value who you are as an individual. I, I don't treat you as common. To, to see someone or to treat someone as common or ordinary or average or, yeah, that's just them, is to be dishonorable. And so how can we make sure that we are honoring, we're elevating our parents above our own opinions sometimes. That, that can be tough, but I think I got some principles for you and for me that I'm working on that can help us move forward. Are y'all ready? Cool. Three quick ones, and then we're going to get out. Number one, the first thing that I think we need to do when it comes to how we can honor our parents better is to listen. Now, I hate listening. I got big ears, but I hate to listen. I love to listen to music. I love to listen to music. I, my, my wife gets mad at me. Liz gets mad at me because the first thing I do whenever I wake up in the morning, uh, before I even go use the bathroom, I have music that starts playing. And she can't stand it. She's like, she needs it to be quiet while she gets ready. Like, she walks in like this. I try to say, hey, babe, good morning. She's like. Like, 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 there, 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 there's no life there. I'm like, hey, man, first thing in the morning, I need some music to kick on get going. So I'm not talking about we need to listen to music, and we listen to movies, we listen to TV shows, but we got to listen to our parents. Now, this is the thing. If you're anything like me, I used to think that my parents, they knew stuff from back when they was going through what I was going through. But nowadays, they couldn't hang in today's culture. Like, hey, mom, pops, how you did it back in the day, that's not how we're doing it now. Example, I talk, with, uh, I talk with my dad, and my dad used to tell me that before they went out anywhere, whether it be a Walmart, Target, Kmart back in the day, no matter what it was, you got dressed up. <laughs> That's sure enough how it ain't. That don't happen around here now. You see people, they, some of these girls, y'all still wearing your sleeping caps, walking around Walmart, acting like nothing. Like, we, we got to... There's a little bit of a culture difference, right? So if it's so different there, maybe it's different. You, you can't correct me the same way because things might be a little bit different. And I think when we look at the basic principles of what our parents are sometimes trying to teach us, they're not all that different. You know, James chapter 1, verse 19 says, Remember this, my dear friends, everyone must be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to become angry. Remember this, my dear friends, everyone must be, everybody say, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. How many of you could say, I got the reverse of that down pat? Like, I'm not real quick to listen, I'm real slow to listen, but I'm real quick to speak, and I'm real quick to get angry. No, not you, just me? Okay, okay. I got a couple head nods. You don't want to raise your hand. It's all good. That, that is exactly how I was whenever I was growing up. I had great parents. I love my mom and pops. I work for them now. I love my parents, but I had a mouth on me. I still do. Hey, easy. I still do. I still do. And, and I'll get, there'll be times where my mom and I, especially my mom and I, because my mom and I, we think a lot alike. And so my mom and I will be kind of going back and forth, and we'll be getting so tight at each other, even right now. And Liz will tell me, like, I'll look up at Liz. I'm like, Liz, do you see what I'm talking about? And she's like, you two are saying the exact same thing. You're just not listening to each other. I'm so quick sometimes just to say an answer because I know I'm right. I'm going to say an answer because this is my truth. Rather than I'm going to listen to what you have to say and see if there's something that I can learn from this situation. This thing, we, we could be so in such a hurry that we end up making a bigger mistake that maybe our parent was trying to keep us from. You know, it's funny how I never realized whenever I was in high school when my parents said, hey, you need to go to sleep. You need to make sure you do your homework. You need to go to sleep. You need to make sure you do your homework. I never understood why they were saying that until I got into college and my GPA went from a 3.75 to a 1.9. And no, I'm not exaggerating. That is legit. When, they did, when my grades hit that, along with some other stuff that happened at that college that I was involved in, and my mom and daddy said, hey, you coming back home because you showed that you're not mature enough to be out on your own. They were telling me while I was there, Caleb, get your grades up. Caleb, you got to get your grades up. Caleb, you need to just go to class. It's doing the average things that I didn't want to do because I didn't think that they were that big of a deal. 
And really, it probably would have been different had someone else told me to do it, I might have listened. Like if a coach told me to do it, I might have listened. If one of my boys told me to do it, I might have listened. If my girlfriend at the time would have told me to do it, I probably wouldn't have listened. And so there, there's, a, I, there's people who we listen to in our lives, but it's funny how sometimes we don't even value the voices of the people that love us the most. So you're willing to provide for me. You're willing to put clothes on my back. You're willing to give me an upbringing, but I'm just not going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to this cat who doesn't even know my middle name. I'm going to listen to this cat who doesn't do nothing for me on my birthday. Don't even shoot me a text. Come on now. We need to make sure that we're honoring our parents one way we can honor them by listening to them. Because, again, they can help us from making certain mistakes that will delay our life. And this past weekend, um, I went to the state track meet. Uh, uh, up in Jacksonville, and when I was on my way back, uh, we hit traffic like crazy. I mean, I'm talking like I was on I-4 at 5 o'clock. Like, it was horrendous. We was coming from uh, Orla- Jacksonville down to Orlando, and while we were driving, um, I-, I was using my GPS. I-, I used the app Waze. Anybody use Waze? I love Waze because it tells me where the cops are. And so I was, I was using Waze, and while I, was, while I was going on Waze, it told me, hey, I want you to take this exit right here. You're going to go around everything. It's like, I bet we're going to make this happen. I'm going to leave all y'all suckers. And so while I'm driving, um, I get so caught up in a conversation that I was having that I didn't even listen to what the GPS was saying. And so what was only like an hour and a half left of my drive ended up being two hours and 15 minutes because I missed my exit, all because I wasn't listening. I wonder what could happen to us, how far forward we would be in life, how quicker we would get to the dreams that we have on the inside of us if we would only listen to the people that are helping to guide us and are trying to help us make decisions not to not let our dreams happen, but in order to actually help our dreams come true. If I would have listened to Waze, I would have gotten home at a faster time and it would have taken less money, less gas in order to get there. But because I decided to do things my way, I got my results and my results weren't that great. We need to make sure that we're listening to our parents. As, and I'll say it in this kind of a way. As long as what they're, saying, they're telling you to do aligns with the Bible and is not illegal, there's no reason to question. As long as what they're saying to do is not going against what the Bible says and is not illegal, then there is nothing wrong with going in, hitting everything that they have for you, everything that they're asking you to do. We need to make sure that we're listening to our parents. Number two, the second thing that we need to make sure that we're doing is we need to make sure that we are learning from our parents. Oh, I know, it kind of sounds like school. I'm, try- I'm not trying to make it school, but I'm trying to give you a principle that could actually help you in life. Everybody say learn. Everybody say learn. How many of you like to learn? So you like to be ignorant. If you don't like to learn, then you like to be ignorant. Ignorant means not knowing. Stupid means I know better, but I'm not going to do it. Like, I know I shouldn't talk in the middle of the message, but I'm going to do it. I'm joking. That's not that. Uh, the, 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 the stupid means I know better, and I'm not going to do it. Ignorant is I just don't know any better, so how can I do anything different? If we don't constantly learn, then we are going to be ignorant in life. If you don't learn how to drive, then you're going to be an ignorant driver. If you don't learn how to do homework and you want to go to college, you're going to be real ignorant in college. I was ignorant when I went to college. I was so ignorant. I was ignorant. I was. I, I never had to do, I never really had to study in high school. I, 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 I never really did. And then I got to college. And I didn't know how to study. And I had to learn real quick how to do things in order to help me set up my life. See, uh, we are always going to learn from things, but most of the time we learn from people that we honor and that we respect, right? Like if I'm going to listen to, if I did sports, if I'm going to listen to a coach, uh, I need to make sure that you know what you're talking about. Like you don't want to listen to me about how to play soccer. Because I can't even play soccer on PS4, let alone in an actual game. Like, you'd want to listen to Josue, who just won a state championship for their division. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out Excel. Shout out Excel. See, so you you, you don't want to do that. Like, I'm not your guy. Now, if you want to talk football, hey, now now we can talk. You don't want to take, if if you're a a singer, you don't want to take voice lessons from someone who can't sing. Because they're not going to be able to benefit you because when we learn from someone, we're gaining information that they have already discovered, right? 
This is the thing. We're either going to learn by other people's mistakes or by our failures. We're going to learn by other people's mistakes or we're going to learn by our personal failures. One is going to cost us a whole lot. The other one, they've already had to pay for it. We get the benefit of it. Which one do we want to learn from? I think at times we want, it, we want both, right? Like when I'm sitting here talking with you, I'm like, hey, I want to learn this. Well, the, the best way, so I'm going to learn from somebody else. Hey, let's go. Let's get it. Uh, but then there might be some times where I start thinking that I know a little bit more. I, I start thinking that I know I've been through some things in life that make me feel like I know everything about life now. And that I don't have anything to learn or I at least got this situation locked down. And so then I try to go at it my way. And if we make the decision ahead of time that I'm going to learn from people, I want to know what you've gone through. I want to I want to experience if you're an underclassman and you want to uh, obtain a starting position on the uh, on the football team or the basketball team. Or if you want to get into that, a, uh, those AP classes, talk to someone that's above you, learn from them how to do that. But we got to be able to learn from our parents. Proverbs 20, uh, 12, verse 1 says, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. I didn't say it. The Bible did. It says, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Let's leave that up for a second. Instruction does not mean criticism. Instruction is not I'm beating you down, telling you everything that you did wrong. Instruction is... I'm going to celebrate what you did right. I'm going to give you something that we can tweak just a little bit in order to go from what you did really good to make that thing really great. That's what instruction is. So whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But whoever hates correction is stupid. Now, there's a, it, it, it's funny how pro athletes are able to have coaches and culture is okay with it. Tom Brady, arguably the best quarterback to ever be, he has a coach. That is still telling him how to read the plays better, how to throw the ball better, when to let the ball go at different points in time. He's the, arguably the best, and he still has someone else that is coaching him because he's learned that in order for me to go further, I have to humble myself and understand that someone might know something that I don't know, and I can learn from them. But when it comes to our parents, I will say that there's two different ways that we can learn, two different ways. Everybody say two. We can learn what to do or what not to do. But in every situation, we can learn something. There's things that my dad has done in the house that I absolutely love. My dad, he, he had our house being a house of laughter. We were always joking and goofing around. He would take me and throw me, like whenever I was a little kid, he would take me and throw me uh, with all my clothes on and throw me in the shower and turn the water on. Like we, he, he was just, he was a clown. He was he was crazy. Uh, so I, I, I remember that from being at home. So I was like, man, whenever I have a kid, whether it's a boy, whether it's a girl, I, I want to be doing that thing. I, I, I want my kid to be laughing. I want my kid to be smiling whenever they come home. I, I want that joy in the house. But then there were some other things that I've seen my dad do that I'm like, hey, that worked for you. I just ain't going to be doing that. Like one example, my dad does not eat bacon. My dad don't eat bacon. I know it's tough, so let it settle in. But it's the thing. Just because he don't eat bacon don't mean that I can't, and it doesn't make it wrong. I've learned from him what to do with, hey, I want my house to be full of fun. I learned what not to do, and daddy bacon tastes real good. I'm going to keep eating it. And so we learn at different points in times from every situation, but we have to have uh, our eyes open and say, hey, I I'm going to learn. Right? I'm not going to learn anything if I'm closed off to it. If I'm looking for something to critique, I will find something to critique. But if I'm looking to learn from a situation, then I definitely will. We got to make sure that we are learning from our parents. And then the last thing that we need to do, the first, so the first one was we got to listen. The second one was we got to learn. And then this last one is we got to love. We got love. Now, I'm not saying like, hey, mommy, I love you. Here's your, here's your Mother's Day card kind of a thing. By the way, y'all celebrated your mamas, right? Okay. Make a show. If I called her, she would say, yeah? Okay. Did you cook? If you cook for her, then you do not love her because that takes a nasty. Um, so we got to make sure. We got to make sure that we are showing our parents Love. 
man, Pastor Caleb, don't none of this sound spiritual. You're right, but if we can't even get this stuff right, then why go any deeper? What's the point of taking the AP class if we can't even get the basic level down? There's no need for it. These are things that we all have to work on. We all need to get better at listening. We all need to get better at learning. We all need to get better at showing love because this is the thing. Love is a choice of action. It's not an emotion. Love is a choice of action. It is not an emotion. Love ain't just this thing that I feel. I feel happy. Let you cut me off on I-4 and I feel real mad. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I feel real happy when I eat Chick-fil-A. I feel real sad after I'm done eating my Chick-fil-A. When there ain't no more nugget and you go for one more or that fry at the bottom of the bag that's no longer there, you thought it was. Oh, Did y'all just hear that Chick-fil-A is limiting the sauces? Hey, listen. Hey, hey, listen, listen, listen. Hey. Gas and Chick-fil-A sauce. I could do without gas. Give me that Chick-fil-A sauce. I need that. But listen, love is a choice. <clears throat> love is a choice of action. It's not an emotion. We feel a whole bunch of things. But an action, a choice is something that we can stand on no matter what the situation is. Situ my emotions change based on the situation, but my actions can stay the same because I dictate how I will respond in a situation. There's a big difference there. Something that I've said for a long time, we have to act our way into a feeling instead of feeling our way into an action. What does that mean? When we're down here and we're doing worship in the beginning, I promise you, I don't feel like jumping up and down. I promise you, I don't always feel like raising my arms up when we're in praise and worship. I just don't. If you always do, good for you. Teach me how. I need to listen and learn. Huh, see what I did there? But, if, but that's just not me. That's not how I function. But what I do know is when I start doing it, I might not feel like it at first, but if I do it, then as I get going, I will start to embrace the feeling later. John or 1 John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. So if we tell someone that we love them, I have to first make sure that I know God because if I don't know God, then hey, I just really like you. Or really, I just prefer you over everybody else that I have to be in contact with right now. <laughs> We need to make sure that we are showing love. My, um, my mom, I remember uh, I was a junior in high school. My mom, uh, school had just ended. And if you, maybe your mom is like me. The day school gets out is the day you start cleaning your room. And so um, I, had to, I, had to, I had a whole bunch of clothes on the ground. I guess I was like trying to figure out what to wear. So I don't know. I, I never put away laundry. So I was like, I had all these clothes laying around everywhere. And my mom said, yo, you need to clean up your room, put everything away. Like, you need to get it. And I told her, man, I, all right, mom, I got you later. But I got you. I got you. And so I kept doing what I want to do, kept doing what I want to do. It got later and later. She reminded me one more time, and then it ended up being late at night. I just remember I got home after 9 p.m. I don't know what time I got home, but I got home after 9 p.m. And um, my mom, she said, hey, you know, before you go to sleep, you still got to clean your room, right? Man, ain't that the worst? And my mom and dad, they weren't the type to say, like, hey, clean your room, and then, like, go to sleep. Like, my mom would say, hey, clean your room, and then 15 minutes later walk through to see if I've made any progress or not. Like, that's how my mom, she, she was going to check up on what she asked you to do. And I remember when, when she did that, I, I started cleaning my room like, man, I, I had a mad face on. I'm sure I turned on some music that was not honoring to my mother. And so I'm, I'm listening to all this stuff. I'm like, man, I don't want to do none of this. I'm sure I'm hissing a fit. If I had someone to call, I'd have called somebody, but I'm sure I was probably in trouble at that time. Then they had my phone. Like, I, I was tripping. But then, as the night went on, I was like, wait, hold on. I, this is kind of feeling good. Like, I, I can see my carpet. <laughs> I didn't know it was that color. Like, like I'm, I'm able to start actually seeing things, right? I ended up cleaning my entire dress. I had eight, I had eight drawers. I ended up cleaning my entire dress out. And I had, right, I'm going to take this to the donation center pile. This one right here, this is going to be my trash pile because don't nobody need these shirts. This over here, this is what I got to refold and then put it back. I ended up not even sleeping that night. And my mom came in the next morning. She's like, you stayed up all night doing this? Like, yeah, I stayed up all night doing this. 
What I realized was I did not feel like cleaning my room at all. That's why I procrastinated it all day. But when I actually started doing it, then the feeling started to come after. And then I did so much more than what my mom had initially asked me to do. See, what I'm trying to tell you is when we start loving our parents with our actions and what we're doing and how we're responding and how we're handling the things that they ask us to do, then that is us honoring God and or us honoring God and them. And we might not feel like it at the beginning, but as we keep going, we will start to see the benefit of our actions that we're putting in. The other thing that I know about love is that love, it knows all the negative things. It knows when your dad spoke wrong to you. It knows when your mom says something to you that you didn't like. It knows when you got yelled at inappropriately. It love knows all of that. It knows all the bad things that have happened. It knows when they told you they were going to do something and they didn't do it. Love knows all of that, but it still chooses to focus on the good. Now, I don't mean in the abusive standpoint, but what I do mean is I, I, Liz loves me not because I'm perfect, although I like to think I am. <laughs> Listen, you ain't got to be like laughing like that. I'm not perfect, yet she still chooses to love me. She's not perfect, yet I still choose to love her. My parents aren't perfect, but I still choose to love them. Can I list some negative things? Could Liz list some things for you that I need to change? <laughs> I'm surprised she ain't posted them yet. It's a five-page essay. Like, she got a whole list. But she still chooses to stay in, to lean in, to let this marriage get better, to keep growing. Because that's just what love does. And when we refocus our head from all the bad things and the negativity thing to then on the good things, when we refocus our mind onto the love, then we will see that, man, we're... I actually deserve to be honoring my parents. My, my, my parents deserve that from me. They deserve the action, not just the word service. It's easy to hold, talk a whole bunch of smack, but how can I live this thing out better? I'm about to stay into your feet. We honor others because we honor God. And because we honor God, we honor our parents. That don't mean that I always feel like it, but because I honor God, I have to honor my parents. Be, because I honor God, that doesn't mean that I can say whatever I want to my mom and dad. Because I honor God. Because I honor God, I can't talk to my parents as if they're my boys out on the football field. Because they're not my boys. They're of a higher authority in my life than I am at that point in time. But why is it that we honor and we respect strangers sometimes more than we respect our parents? Have y'all ever had that happen to you? Like, like, I treat a stranger off the street sometimes better than I would treat my mom. Like, I would have more manners whenever I went out to a store than whenever I was walking in the house. And one thing that I've learned in my life is it's hard to honor people that you get too familiar with. It's really hard to honor people you get too familiar with. If you're careful, you'll think your parents are your friends. <laughs> They're not. If you're careful, you think your teacher's your homie. They're not. If we're careful, we'll think God is our credit card. He's not. We have to so check and put in line how we're viewing people and how, what, how familiar are we letting ourselves get. How can I protect myself from making sure that I don't let things get too familiar? I honor you. I put you, I choose to lift you up. I serve you I, I, by my actions, by, by how I listen to you, how I choose to learn from you, how I choose to love you. That is how I'm able to make sure that, hey, this isn't a too familiar relationship. I'm able to still receive from you. I'm able to still listen, learn, and love straight from you and where you are. We have to so make careful that we, be careful that we don't get too familiar with this. It's hard to respect your parents' correction when you see them as a friend rather than your parent. My friends can give me opinions. My parents can correct me. There's a big difference. I value your opinion, but I respect their correction. It's different. We have to make sure we're honoring them. And if we're not honoring God, then how familiar do we think that we are with him? If you've grown up a Christian, how 
I, I attend a private school. I hear about God. We pray every day. I hear about God. My mama, daddy might say it once or twice. I hear about God. Bet. If we treat him as ordinary, then we are dishonoring him. If we treat our parents as another voice in our life, then we will be dishonoring them. And again, this is the only principle, the only commandment that the Bible says there is a blessing attached to this whenever you do this. If you honor your mother and your father, then your days will be long. God will give you heaven on earth. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We're so grateful that you challenge us to get better. If, if you didn't love us, then you wouldn't challenge us. But because you love us, you challenge us each and every day to get better, to push forward, to grow more. And God, I pray at this moment that you help all of us honor and respect our parents, that when the, what they say and how they say things, we're able to listen to them, we're able to learn from them, and we're able to love, that we'll be slow to speak, but quick to hear and quick to listen, that you'll put us in positions that we will be able to act out our love to where it's not just lip service that we're giving off, but it's something that we can back up by our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.